شكرا السيد الرئيس أود أن أعبر عن ترحيب بلادي بتواجد السيد رياض المالكي Thank you, Mr. President. First and foremost, we welcome the presence amongst us of His Excellency, the Palestinian Foreign Minister, Mr. Riyad al-Maliki. Palestine lately received non-member state status among the family of the United Nations and received this very late in the day, more than 65 years following the adoption of Resolution 181. This was the first stage on the path towards the Palestinian people obtaining their inalienable right to establishing their independent state with Jerusalem as its capital, in keeping with the borders of 4th of June 1967. To that end, we call upon the Security Council to respond to the call of the Palestinian state to obtain full-fledged member status of the United Nations while guaranteeing the reinstatement of all legitimate rights including the return of Palestinian refugees to their motherland for all Palestinian people and providing compensation for the losses incurred in a fair and equitable manner pursuant to Resolution 194 of 1984. Mr. President, I can affirm that the Palestinian people, following the plethora of meetings of the United Nations that have been held throughout the past years, that have been taking place since the inception of the Israeli occupation, I can nearly affirm that these people are looking upon us with a skeptical gaze and how could it be otherwise given the fact that these people have been held hostage for more than 65 years in the most abject forms of racist expansionist occupation how could it be otherwise indeed given the continued systematic campaign of settlement activity which has stamped out any hope for the emergence of a viable Palestinian state. These practices which have not halted for a single day, how indeed could it be otherwise, given that Israel has practiced and continues to perpetrate the worst forms of racist discrimination continues flagrant violations of human rights and of international humanitarian law. How could it be otherwise? How could they not fail to look with skepticism upon our informal periodic meetings that are held here within the Security Council, while this Council has proven incapable of putting an end to this tragedy, the tragic fate of these people? failing to reinstate their legitimate rights and has instead set aside a majority of its prerogatives to the, to the quartet which has failed to tackle the situation and has indeed sidelined the General Assembly. In view of the unstinting support that a number of the members of the quartet have given to Israel, how could it be otherwise? Mr. President, if we wish to preserve what still remains of the credibility of the United Nations, if we wish to uphold opportunities and the potential for peace in the region and prevent war, then the United Nations and its member states must refrain from the monotonous practices with regard to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, a, an approach which lacks any real content, serious content, and which is incapable of leading to tangible results on the ground. It is time to start taking specific measures in order to end, once and for all, the inability of the United Nations to fulfill its obligations in order to stop the Israeli occupation of Arab territories, to end this incapacity, this inability, which, as everyone knows, is the outcome of the intransigence, intransigence of the Israeli government, who have been blindly supported and unfairly justified by a number of powers that are 
present and acting within this Council. We are deeply alarmed by the fact that the Secretary General stated in his briefing concerning the priorities for 2013 and failed to include a reference to the resolution of the Arab-Israeli conflict. This was not included as one of the priorities. And we are all the more alarmed as the coordinator for the peace process in the Middle East. When providing his briefing, also failed to refer to an essential component of his mandate and of his obligations, and that is, namely, the Israeli occupation of the Syrian Golan. And this, while it has been brought to his attention, and while other representatives of the Secretariat have warned him of the consequences of ignoring this essential component of the international agenda concerning the Middle East. This is an essential facet, an essential point, and occupied Syrian Golan is an integral part of this agenda item. The representatives of the Secretary General, therefore, must refer to this. They must refer to the occupied Syrian Golan in their briefings and presentations. The special coordinator, when providing his briefing to the Security Council, avoided making any allusion, any allusion whatsoever, to the Golan, even though this is part of his mandate. In doing so, instead, he referred at length to the prevailing situation in Syria, even though this is not part of his mandate. So, Mr. President, more than 45 years have passed since Israel's occupation of the Golan. However, throughout these long decades, this apparently has not been time enough in order to compel Israel, the occupying power, to implement the relevant United Nations resolutions, in particular 497, 242, and 338, in order to end Israel's occupation of the Syrian Golan, and in order to also end its systematic grave human rights violations, and putting an end also to its terrorist policy and to its policy of racial discrimination and reprisals, and to its settlement, unbridled expansionist activities, calling upon Israel to provide maps of the areas that have been mined in the Syrian Golan and to provide these for international supervision. The explosion of cluster munitions and the mines that have been placed by the occupying powers in Syrian Golan have led to over 700 casualties. 227 of these were children. And we have brought this information to the attention of the Secretary General. And the most recent violations, the most recent acts of violence in this regard are an increase in the number of abductions of Syrian citizens. who were abducted from the disengagement zone from Syria by the occupying power by Israel. The authorities have even gone so far as to provide support to armed terrorist groups operating in the disengagement zone in order to make use of these groups, to exploit the groups working in these areas in order to justify the construction of a separation wall and racial discrimination. This wall is 40 kilometers long, running along the ceasefire line in the occupied Golan. And the intention here is to continue the unbridled attempts of Israel and by the occupying authorities to rend the Golan from Syria, to rip it away from Syria and to include it as part of its occupation. We underscore the need for the Golan to be returned in its entirety to my country. We call for the Golan to be restored to Syria, whether or not this is acceptable to the Israeli delegate. It is truly regrettable that in spite of all of 
Israel's crimes that have been perpetrated in spite of all of the resolutions adopted by the United Nations, that in spite of all of the reports that have been drawn up by the uh, United Nations Commissions of Inquiry, reports that condemn and describe these crimes unequivocally, it is regrettable that the Israeli leaders and the Israeli perpetrators of these crimes continue to shirk any responsibility or accountability on the interna international level because of the illegal immunity that has been granted to them by certain states. We all witnessed this morning the insolence demonstrated by the representative of Israel who in his statement unequivocally demonstrated that he is completely divorced from reality, that he is operating in a situation of political delirium, immoral hallucination, denigrating fully the rights of the Palestinian people. The Israeli representative <coughs> is misled if he believes that in any way he can alter or distort the historic reality as it is through a statement that is full of lies and political trickery. And we call upon you to read this book, The General's Son, in English. No. Mati Pilate. He is considered one of the Israelis' generals, the most prominent Israeli generals who participated at Israel's wars against its neighbors in 48, 56, and 67. Then this, this general, who passed away in 1995, converted to peace, and he became a peace activist in Israel. He speaks about the wrongdoings of the Israeli policies towards the Palestinian people as well as towards the Arabs in the occupied territories. By the way, this, this man lives in Israel. He is an Israeli citizen. But the book was published in Ramallah. The Palestinians gave authorization to publish this book. The Israeli government prevented this book from being published. Mr. President, once again, I'm obliged to warn of the unbridled attempts made by a number of delegations to water down the historic terms of reference that have been agreed upon pertaining to the situation in the Middle East in the context of the of taking up or addressing other subjects at this debate in seeking to distance us from the matter at hand for the sake of pursuing their own objectives. The issue is putting an end to Israel's occupation of the occupied Arab territories. And accordingly, I shall not respond to the fraudulent allegations that have been made by a number of delegations targeting my country, Syria, during this debate. As this is a matter of principle, and in order to ensure that we do not find ourselves discussing an agenda item that we have often drawn warning attention to, naturally we have a great deal that could be said in order to refute the allegations that have been put forward by member states who have spared no effort in seeking to further worsen the crisis in Syria by supplying arms to extremists and to terrorists who are operating in Syria in order to stymie any possibility of finding a peaceful solution to the crisis. In this regard, I would like to underscore Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Turkey. I shall be brief on this matter. 
And I will simply underline that the Syrian government recently submitted a political program, a comprehensive program for a resolution of the current crisis in Syria. This document is a national solution, one which is based on dialogue between and among the Syrians themselves under Syrian leadership. And we call upon all those who claim to be committed to resolving the situation in Syria to respond positively to this program by putting forward constructive ideas to enable its implementation instead of in refusing political solutions or dialogue. The crisis in Syria will find a, police, a peaceful solution on the Syrian scale. Finally, Mr. President, Our preference would have been for the first statement that was made by our colleague of the United States to the Security Council at the start of President Obama's second mandate, as well as the statements made by our colleague, the distinguished representative of France and of the United Kingdom. Our preference would have been for their statements to have been balanced in nature and to be reality-bound based on Syrian reality as it is on the ground, in keeping with the obligations these states are under pursuant to the Charter of the United Nations, the Geneva Conventions, international law, and Mr. Brahimi's mandate, so that their statements would have been open to the priorities when it comes to lending support to the national dialogue mechanism to resolve the crisis in Syria in both a political and peaceful manner. And that is based on the aspirations of the Syrian people, and on, which is Syrian-led. As is recalled in the two resolutions dealing with the Syrian crisis, instead of supporting one entity of the Syrian opposition, inciting them to uh, operate against the motherland and the Syrian people, pushing them into a cycle of destruction and violence in my country. Thank you, President. I thank the representative.